We call this Jacksonville Planning Advisory Board regular meeting to order. At this time, we'd ask, uh, like to ask Dr. Lasanda to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and Al Keys will lead us in the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for the opportunity again to participate in the business of our city. We pray, our Heavenly Father, that you will continue blessing this city and especially the Marines uh, here and those that are deployed. Lord, we pray that uh, you would bring them back safely as they do the work of our United States government to defend this precious and great country of ours. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would be with us and give us wisdom as we discuss uh, the business tonight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. 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 <laughs> Good to have everybody back. At this time, we'd like you to take a look at the agenda. And if, you, if you are so pleased, I'd like to have a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. We have a motion from Mr. Keyes. Second. Second from Ms. Moore. Any questions? All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. Good. All those opposed? Motion passes. Review, review and approval of the minutes. Give you a few moments to look back over it again. Anybody have any corrections, deletions, additions, subtractions, multiplications, or divisions? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a math teacher. Of course. I move that we approve the minutes from uh, December the 8th, 2014 meeting. A we second. A, we have a motion by Dr. Lasson, a second by Ms. Vanderveer. Any questions? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like. The motion passes. City Council update. Who's doing it? I'm doing that tonight, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilman Warden had a another meeting. I think it's the Military Affairs committee meeting tonight and um, he missed that last month so he's kind of juggling the two different boards I guess the meeting at similar times or these last two months it's just worked out that way so um, he asked that I give you the report on his behalf uh, at the January 6th City Council meeting uh, City Council approved the special use permit and type 3 site plan for the Zing Zum Children's Museum which is located at 820 Barn Street that's the current fire station two that will be uh, converted um, into a children's museum after the fire station moves to the new location that's on Gum Branch Road near the high school. Uh, they deferred action on two other items uh, that night. Uh, the first one was the rezoning of 202 and 204 Sunset Road, the, the um, Moore Buick, the two parcels next to Moore Buick and Sunset Acres and city staff is going to be meeting with the applicant and the residents next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. here at City Hall. We're gonna have a neighborhood meeting and um, have some discussions on the proposal and, and concerns that the neighbors have raised. First public hearing, there wasn't many people that showed up and the second meeting, because they recessed the meeting, there's quite a few more people that showed up. So we're gonna have a neighborhood meeting to see if anything can be worked out. The other item that they deferred action on was the Article 5 Development Standards Section 5.12 signage. And they, uh, some of the business community members contacted council and there's some concerns, primarily as it relates to lessening the height of signs from 35 to, I believe it was 20 feet, mm -hmm. and um, directed the manager to have a sign ad hoc committee created with business owners, city staff, um, and some other representatives to where maybe we can all come together and see if anything can be worked out and come up with something that may may work for all parties. And that's all that I have to report. Thank you very much. As you're well aware, the Sunset Road 
issues been some time in the making and I'd like to thank the, the board for their input and, uh, and the diligence they showed to make sure that this was something that uh, we can do for the betterment of both the citizens and the business owner. Um, old business there being none we'll go right to new business. Who's up? Mr. Chairman, item, agenda item A is a special use permit and type 3 site plan application for 616 Belfort Road, Lejeune Honda Collision Repair Center. You'll notice the location on the vicinity map before you on Belfort Road. On the screen before you is an aerial image showing the location. It is bordered across Belfort Road by a pet, pet daycare offices and a church all zoned industrial it is bordered directly to the west by a cemetery zoned corridor commercial and the remaining bordering properties are all zoned corridor commercial and used for various auto service automotive repair businesses I have before you the actual zoning showing all the red on the south side of bell fork and the industrial on the north side Jerry S. Stevenson Properties LLC has submitted this request. Uh, Mr. John Pierce is here representing him, re representing them. This proposed 9,256 9, square foot automotive paint and body shop. Again, it's proposed at 616 Belfort Road on a 1.65 acre track. This is redevelopment of an existing site. They are proposing to actually reduce the building square footage on the site by 1,380. Within the corridor commercial district, automotive paint and body shops are a special use. Therefore, that's why this request is in front of you. The parking standards for this location uh, per section 5.1 of the UDO is one space per 250 square feet of gross floor area for the actual building used for automotive paint and body shop uh, as they have proposed would be 5,250 and then one space per 1,000 for proposed storage building proposed and in this case they've proposed 4,000 square feet of uh, storage so therefore their parking requirement per the UDO is 25 parking spaces the UDO would allow them to go up to 38 total with the 150 percent um, maximum. However, they are only proposing to require 25 spaces. Because this is a redevelopment site, um, <coughs> their landscaping is working around existing asphalt, minimizing that. However, coming into our requirement to the best extent practicable. Um, all parking will be located within trees and landscaping islands. They will have perimeter buffering. They will be installing the eight foot street lawn and buffering. And <clears throat> also meeting the requirements of the UDO for automobile paint and body, which includes an eight foot fence around the storage area. Um, no cars can be there longer than 30 days, what have you, because it's not a storage lot. It is an automotive paint and body. Staff is recommending approval of this request with findings of fact A, B, D, E, F, and G being found in the affirmative. Um, finding of fact C would be consistent if staff is directed to update the CAMA. Currently, the CAMA proposes this to be office. Um, however, if directed, staff would update this at the same time looking at the overall Belfork area for a updated future land use designation. Uh, Mr. John Pierce is here, as I said, and I would be happy to answer any questions you may have regarding this request. I've, I've noticed there's a building there now. What What is this currently used for now? It was at one time a office storage, I believe, and without calling it, I think it was medical storage files and facilities until um, Stevens Properties bought it. Any other questions? Uh, I Mike, Pierce? there's a... There was a metal worker that's in the rear building, and the other was, was storage. But it used to, years ago, if you remember, Grady moving in storage, that's what used to be there. It occupied both buildings. But there was a, a metal fabricator that worked on the base that occupied the 
the rear building and the front building was used for storage. That is correct. Is it going to be uh, the current building? Is it being demolished or no, sir? They're going to be. Uh, they're going to be. The front of it is going to be torn off. It was encroaching. It was too close to the right of way. And it's going to be removed and it's going to be upfitted and revamped and restored and it's going to be utilized. And that's what we hopefully we should be is re utilizing some of these older buildings that's left around. And actually, yeah. it's the use is contiguous. They've already got an auto body place right beside it. The yes. Stevenson has, and so it's just a. Expanding and utilizing uh, uh, some empty buildings, or would be empty buildings. Is there access to the cemetery through that area? They've, they've always went and come right through that, and that's why we're leaving the gate there so they can get access to the old Pollock Cemetery. You can't by law need anybody to go into to a graveyard. And I'm assuming that, that I don't see this as a major traffic generator, but. Um, I don't see it being a major traffic generator at all. Not probably as much a uh, traffic problem as it would have been back in the days when moving the storage was there with 18 wheelers coming in, in and out. Because it is a couple of built, it is a couple of sites down from the elementary school, correct? In there. Um, yeah. It's about four sites, I think, down from the elementary school. It's across from what used to be the moving and storage, allied moving and storage, yep. or not allied, but where John Sewell's moving and storage used to be. Yeah, it's almost, it, yeah, I can see it's across from the animal house. Actually, there's a, there's, that's exactly right. There's an access road between that, the extension out that goes to the base. Mm -hmm. So it's not contiguous to, we're not joining the elementary school. Okay. There's a stoplight that separates them too, and then there's two or three other businesses. Any other questions? Is it safe to assume that the June automotive area there has uh, a special site permit has been submitted for that in previous years? The adjacent property, it was not required because they do not do butt paint and body at this time. They wouldn't, they do just do general automotive service, which is a permitted use in the CC district. Now, if they were to do any major remodeling renovations, and we have specific standards for automobile service and repair, then they would have to comply with them. Thank you. Are we approving the special use permit and site plan now? Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. Based upon the fin findings of fact, if you'll make your motion. Okay, I would like to make that motion to approve the special use permit and site plan and um, Based on what? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Based on the let's see. Findings of fact A, B, D, E, F, and G being found in the affirmative. Thank you. <laughs> we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have to uh, update the? That's a good question. Do we? Do we have would to do that? Recommend staff. Can we do yes. that in this motion? Yes, sir. That part of that motion should be to recommend staff you, update the camera. Would you be amenable to that, Ms. Moore? Okay. The finding the fact C. I move that the finding the fact C be consistent. And direct the staff. And to direct the, the staff to update the the camera. And I will second that. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any other discussion? <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Moore. Thank you. Thank you. you will. <laughs> Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. <clears throat> it looks like now we're down to reports. Reports. No reports. Okay. Good. Any other discussion? Anything else? Okay. Can we have a motion of something? So move. We adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Second. You got that? Second? Okay. And we're out of here. <laughs>